Welcome to the Southwest Florida Fishing Channel. We get a lot of requests on uh, fishing right here in Southwest Florida, Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we're mainly fishing out of Stump Pass, which is kind of between Charlotte County and uh, Sarasota County. So, Manasota Key, you might have heard of Manasota Key, Siesta Key. Inglewood Beach. Well, how do you catch more fish? How do you catch more fish? Well, it's pretty simple because of today's technology. Uh, number one step would be to put some apps on your cell phone. Here's uh, some of the best apps to put on. The NOAA Weather, the Wind Alert, CETO, and this, this one right here, th there's many of these out there. Uh, they're fishing apps. It tells you the best time to fish where you're at, in the Gulf of Mexico or on the Atlantic coast. So it's I-S-O-L-U-N-A-I. We're not promoting any, any particular app. And then the most important one down here in the corner is the Florida Fish Hunt. Florida Fish Hunt Florida, their app, their official uh, app, and uh, you can do a lot with that. So inside that Florida fishing app is weather, fishing rules and regulations, where to get uh, license, whole list, whole menu there. Sorry about that. Whole menu. Saltwater fishing guide, uh, tide stations, freshwater seas, find a boat ramp, feeding times, feeding times. That's it. That's that's. This has really been updated. Uh, trophy catch Florida, catch Florida memory, current location. So you put in your current location. You get the weather. You find out what fish are in your area, what fish you can catch, what the limits are, how big they have to be, what's closed, what season's closed, all available on that Florida Fish and Hunt. Tons of information in there. Also, it gives you a link to the weather. So this is a report, basically a weekly report coastal waters from Bonita Beach to Inglewood, Florida, and uh, tells you what it is today, 10 knots, 5 knots, 2 feet or less, uh, 3 feet, you know, so you can choose what day is best to go fishing, you know, S some boaters fishing, if you, even if it's just going boating, but I mean, you don't want to go out in the Gulf when it's saying it's uh, three to four, but maybe you do, but that's up to you. But this is a way to find out, not just go, go out there and see what's happening. So uh, inside there, there's uh, a map that will come up and it'll have different uh, locations off the coast. So this one right here is 20 miles out this, this one right here is in Charlotte Harbor, and then out here is about 40, 50 miles out. So you can click on that, open it up, and you could see uh, what the seas are like, what the forecast is going to be. Uh, and here, here's a near shore report. When I say near shore, that means 20 miles out. And uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to have an 8 mile an hour wind with a gust up to 10, this is the direction of the wind. You can see the wind picks up. Now you look down here, sunny skies, but then it gets cloudy. Down here gives you the temperature at the time of day. You're gonna be out at 10 o'clock. It's 67 degrees. And here's the wave height, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 in the morning, less than a foot. All through, you go up and all the way up until the wind picks up at 14 miles an hour at uh, 1 o'clock, 13 miles an hour, 1 o'clock. 
So you can plan your day. This gives you the PERS, so that's the, the space between the swells. And again, the hours down here. So you can plan your day. When do you want to go out? You know, do I want to go out at 10 or 9, 7, 6 in the morning, 4.30? What time does it get? What time does the sun come up? It's all in those apps. And then in that fishing, uh, to give you an idea what a, inside a fishing app, you know, it'll give you the peak times that the fish are active and biting. It all has to do with the tides and the moon. And uh, it all plays a part, uh, high tide, low tide. But like, for instance, here, but the peak time, the major time to catch fish is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The peak time is 11.30. Up here at the top is the rating for the day. When it's a four fish day, one, two, three, four, oh, man, you got to go fishing. A four fish day between 10 and 1, so you go out at 8 o'clock, you catch some live bait, you head out to where you're going to fish, whether it's bottom fishing or trolling or whatever, at, and make sure you're there at 10 o'clock, and you can fish all the way up until 1, and you're going to catch some fish. 90% of the time, this is very accurate. Now, if there's a time up here that doesn't fit with what you would like to go fishing, there are minor times, okay? So in, in here, it's from 4 to 5.41. So from 1 o'clock all the way over to 4 o'clock, the fish aren't very active. You have a three-hour lull between tides, and the, the fish aren't particularly your feet. Doesn't mean you won't catch fish, but if you want to increase your odds... If you're a betting fisherman, man or woman, you want to increase your odds, you find out what the major time, major, you know, what the uh, conditions are going to be like, the temperature, is it going to be fair? Is it going to rain? Is it going to be thunderstorms? You need to bring a raincoat, you know? So you put in your location in these apps. So I, right here I have Englewood. You can see where Englewood is. And this is Charlotte Harbor. And I can... Click on these different spots. These are buoys out here. And that gives me an idea of what the wave height is going to be. So you're going out into the Gulf of Mexico through Stump Pass or up here in Sarasota, Venice, whatever. And it looks like kind of pretty calm along the beach. Back here in the bay, it's pretty calm. There's hardly any wind, nothing. Once you get three miles out, things seem to change most of the time. The currents change, the tide, you know, and then you, so don't just say, oh man, it looks good, let's go. And then, you know, you head out and you get out about 10 miles and you're going like, oh my goodness, it's rocking out of here, man. So use these apps, use them, increase your chances of fishing, find out when the best time to go fishing, just, just don't jump in a boat and head out there, you know, and uh, so that's kind of the tip for right now, boating information, make sure you have a fishing license, you know, in the state of Florida, if, now if you have a Florida driver's license and you're 65 years old, you don't need a license, but if you're from out of state and a snowbird and you still have your Ohio, Michigan license, and you're out there fishing, you don't have a fishing license, and you get stopped, and that happens quite often, Fish and Wildlife is out there with their boats uh, looking for people fishing, and they want to know, you got a fishing license? You got a registration to the boat? Do you have enough life jackets? Do you have a fire extinguisher? Do you have an emergency flare or flag? Do you have a marine radio? Do you have any weapons on board? That's just fish and wildlife. And then, you know, they want to come aboard. They want to inspect your boat. They want to see all these things, a throw cushion. 
throw cushion, life jackets, all the safety gear that you need on a boat, no matter where you are, whether you're out in a golf or in the bay, you, you know, fish and wildlife is out there. And then you got the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard will stop you. And they want to see all your safety equipment. They may even want to see what fish you got. You know, make sure you have legal fish on your boat. And make sure the fish are kept whole. Don't start filleting fish while you're out there. You got to do that back at the dock. So, and then the other thing, you go out past the uh, state, the waters, like here in Englewood, it's uh, nine miles. You go out nine miles, you're in federal waters. Coast Guard is out there. Coast Guard is out there, and they're part of the Homeland Security uh, Department, too. And uh, they have these armor-plated like you've never seen boats and now they can pick you up on their radar. They can be 50, a hundred miles away. They see you're out there and, uh, you know, 25 miles out and, uh, they, they're patrolling out there. They're going to come up on you quick. You won't know where they came from and they're, they're going to want to see all your safety equipment. They may, they want to see identification. Don't hop on your boat without, a picture ID and the people on your boat people you're fishing with picture ID if just if you're boating if you're fishing picture ID and a fishing license unless you're a Florida resident over 65 so find out all the rules you know whenever you go to uh, the Bureau of Motor Vehicles in Florida pick up one of the magazines there that has the uh, Fish and Wildlife, uh, all the regulations, and uh, you have to you have to uh, stay up to date. And if you're, I would recommend that uh, when you go into Fish and Wildlife, uh, put your email address in there. So if all of a sudden they decide they're closing groupers or amberjacks or just recently we had a situation where there's a lot of lane snappers out here in the Gulf of Mexico and I've never seen them close it but for a couple weeks in uh, December they the end of December they closed lane snappers for like I don't know like two weeks now if you didn't have them sending you an email from Fish and Wildlife they didn't have your email address, you're not going to find out unless you go online, read their magazine, whatever. But, you know, that let them, give them your email address, let them notify you, send you notices when something changes. And uh, so there you have it. Make sure you uh, click on that little red arrow down there in the right-hand corner so you can subscribe to our channel. And we have a lot of new videos coming up and a lot of fishing trips planned, especially this winter 2020. So, uh, you know, look for us on uh, Twitter. You can Twitter us at SWFC. Twitter at SWFC. Southwest Florida. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> this is new. It's uh, at SWFFC. SWFFC. That's our Twitter. So uh, give us a shout. Stay tuned.